Hey everyone, it's Zinnia here, and today I wanted to show you how you can make a rhythm game on the phone. So yeah, by the end of this series, you'll be able to make your own game like this one, with your own songs or characters. So yeah, let's get started. So for my project in Octo Studio, I've uploaded these pictures of arrows, and if you want to use the same artwork as me, the link to this project will be in the description. And you want these colorful arrows to be the same exact size as these base arrows, so the way you can do that pretty easily is I'm going to drag this up here, and I'm just going to decrease the size until I'm pretty happy with it. And then I'm just gonna check what size that is. And for me, it's about 17. So to set this purple arrow so it's always that size at the start of the project, I'll just set the size to 17. And I can actually long press this code and just copy it to all these other arrows. So now they should all be the right size, pretty nice. And now I also want this purple arrow to start at the bottom of the screen, right under this gray arrow. So. The way you can do that is, again, I'll drag it right on top of the gray arrow where I want it to go, and then I'll drag out a go to block, uh, because this will update to that position. But then I don't want Y to be 132, I want it to be zero, because that will put it at the bottom of the screen. So I can have it go there at lightning speed, and now that's the perfect place for that arrow to start. I'll make it also start there at the beginning of the game. Then I just have to do the same for the other arrows, and I'm good to go. Also, just in case I accidentally drag around these base arrows at some point while I'm making the project, I'm going to make them go to this position when the game starts as well. Okay, so we've got our setup. Now let's start making these notes move on the screen. So I'll go to this purple arrow, and so we want it to start out at this location here, and then we want it to move upward. And so to do that, you can drag out a move block, and I'll just change the direction to have it go up. And so now, as you can see, that makes it go up by a bit and I'll reset it back down and 180 will make it go all the way to the top of the screen because the height of the screen is 180. So I'll put that here and that makes it do one trip. Now, if I put this inside a forever loop, if you test it out, now that makes it always be going upward to the top of the screen. Okay, so we've got our moving arrows. Now let's make it so that the player has to tap an arrow key at the right time. So to do that, I will tap add a sprite, and I'm going to go down and add an arrow sprite, and I'll make it a little smaller, and I'll just put that here. So let's make it so that when we tap this button sprite, I'm just gonna send a message called left arrow pressed. And so now that we're sending out that message, I can go back to the purple arrow, and we can make it do something when it gets that message. So I'll drag out a when I receive left arrow pressed block, and when the left arrow is pressed, what do we want to happen? Well, we want to check, is this purple note actually close to the base arrow it's supposed to be close to? And so how can we do that? Well, here's one easy way to test it. We can check what the Y position of the purple arrow note is. Since the Y position of a sprite basically tells you how high the sprite is on the screen. So Y position is zero when a sprite is down here, and then you know here it's 38, and there it's 74. And so if the Y position is about 132 when the player taps the arrow, then that would be pretty much a perfect hit. If the Y position is, you know, 98 or something lower than that, then that would definitely be a miss. So let's make that work in our project. So if the purple arrow is below the gray arrows, we want that to count as a miss. So let me see what Y position that is. And that looks like it's about 103. So I will drag out an if block and I will say, if Y position is less than 103, then I'll have that be a miss. And to show that it's a miss, I could drag out a text block and just design whatever you want the miss text to look like. And you could just click accept. So let's try that out. I hit play and then if I tap the arrow when it's below that, it's a miss. So that's going good so far. If the arrow is higher than 103, but lower than about here, let's have that be good. So let me see what Y position that is. That's about 121. So to check something else about the Y position, I could tap this plus sign to get an else, and then I could tap it again to get an else if. And so now I can say else if, let me grab another Y position block, so we're gonna be needing a few of these. Else if the Y position is less than 121, then we want it to say good. So I'll try that out too, let's see if I can time it right. Okay, nice, so that counts as good. Let's also make one for perfect. So how about if the arrow is between there and about there, that will count as perfect. So that's Y position 138. And now you have the option for that. And the one other thing I'm gonna do is say that if the arrow is a bit above the gray arrows, then that will count as good as well. And if it's fully above them, then that will also count as a miss. 
So we have a moving arrow that the player can try to hit at the right time, uh, but there is a bug in our project, and let me show you how to fix it. So uh, the bug is, let's say the arrow is going upward and I just don't tap the button at all. It doesn't say miss, like it doesn't count as me missing that note, but it should count as a miss because I didn't tap it. So to fix that, how about every time the purple arrow goes up, when it gets to the top, we'll check if the player tapped this arrow at all this time around. So to do that, I'll go over to this part of the code where the arrow is going up, and I'm going to make a variable, and I'm gonna call it has the, can I type this without messing it up? Has the left arrow been pressed? So every time the purple arrow goes to the bottom, I'll have it set the variable has the left arrow been pressed to zero because it hasn't been pressed yet this trip. And then how about when the player taps the left arrow button, then we will set has the left arrow been pressed to one to show that it has been pressed. And so, okay, let's just try that out for starters. So you can see when I tap the button, you know, the variable gets set to one and then it resets to zero when we go back to the bottom. So now that we have this to keep track of whether the button's been pressed, now, after it finishes moving up here to the top of the screen, we can drag out another if block and we can say, if has the left arrow been pressed equals zero, like if it hasn't been pressed, then we can say miss the same as we do here because you know, if they didn't press it at all, then that's definitely a miss. So I'm gonna try that out. I won't press the button and there we go. It says miss, uh, but you might notice the arrow just freezes up there for a while and that is because Right now, it's showing the text miss for two seconds before it you know, goes back and does this go to. So a way you can sort of fix that is I'm just gonna make another little broadcast and I'll say send miss to all. And I'm actually just gonna send this broadcast if I wanna show miss. And then within the same sprite, I'll say when I receive miss, then I'll text it. And it might seem odd sending a broadcast and you're receiving the broadcast from the same sprite. But the reason this works is now in this loop where you're doing the movement, you send the broadcast and that just happens instantly. And now you can continue on doing the movement. And in this other stack of code, you can show the text. And that will happen at the same time that this stack is running. There's two more quick fixes I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna drag out the display variable block and set the display of this left arrow variable to off. So that now when the game starts, that variable is hidden because the player doesn't really need to see that variable. It's more for us inside the project. And one last thing I will do is right now, you might notice that if I play the project, I can you know tap this button as many times as I like within the arrow traveling up. And if you want the player to only be able to tap it once every time the note goes upward, I can drag out another if block and I will say, you know the player can only do all of this if has the left arrow been pressed equals zero. So basically what this says is if has the left arrow been pressed is zero, AKA it hasn't happened yet, then we'll do this code. And the first thing we'll do is we'll say, okay, now the left arrow has been pressed. So we keep track of that. But if has the left arrow been pressed is one, then we won't do any of this code because then the player already tapped it this time around. So let's just try it all out. Now I'm spamming this button, but then once I hit it once, I can't hit it again until the arrow comes back. So that is how you can get one arrow working. And then you can use all the same code for all the other arrows. The only thing is you just have to make a new broadcast for each arrow. So a broadcast for when the down arrow is pressed and the up arrow and the right arrow and just replace that broadcast in the code. And then you also just have to make a new variable for each of these arrows to detect whether that particular arrow has been pressed yet. So that's the end of part one of this series. Later on, I'll show more things like how to make the song actually play and how to make the player have to press notes at certain times. But for now, I hope you have fun making your projects and I'll see you in the next video.